Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. The mayor of Reno is joining us. Hillary Sheedy here for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces. Full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. Each day, the Children's Advocacy Alliance partners with leaders, legislators, and families across Nevada to improve children's health, education, economic well-being, and safety. We recognize Nevada will be no better than the state of its children. Be a part of this change. Be a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Alliance. For more information, go to caanv.org. The Do It Right guys at Nevada Heating have one mission. Your air conditioner breaks down today. We fix it today. Why sweat for days while your air is down when Nevada Heating can get the job done today and you can get cool again? For nearly 50 years, locally owned Nevada Heating has been getting the job done right. Call today at 323-5585 or see us online at nevadaheating.com. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you, safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators, from the exotic to the everyday, trucks are everywhere, moving everything, never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are always pleased to welcome back to the program Hillary Sheevy. She is the mayor of Reno. Pleasure to have you back on the program. Sorry you're not able to be here in person. Oh, thanks for having me, Sam. Always a pleasure to see you. Okay, so explain to folks that, uh, that you are currently in quarantine, but you don't have COVID. No. <laughs> so I came in contact with someone that, that does. And so just to be, uh, you know, safe and keep everyone else safe, uh, I'm quarantining for a little bit, but um, everything is, is good so far. So just, you know, trying to keep all of us safe right now. Um, how was it when you were first able, because, um, because of your, your kidney transplant, um, you had to be in isolation for quite a long time. What was it like when you first got out into the public again? Oh, it was, it was great. It was so funny. I kept looking at people in the face and saying, wow, you have so much color in your face because, you know, the last year we were on Zoom together. <laughs> and so really, you know, it's so nice to see everyone and just... You know, one of my first events was at the Aces Stadium and it was just it was so great to just be able to be in person with everyone. And you really miss sort of that hometown feel that we have that we're so fortunate to have. And so it was just really, really nice. I think all of us were just elated to, to be back and also re realizing the things that we might take for granted, those little things. Um, and so, you know, it's just been it's been really nice. So hopefully um you know, we'll, we'll get back at it soon. But, you know, these numbers are spiking, so we got to be careful and we have to stay diligent. Um, we're taping this on the morning of August 18th for playback at this time. Um, we just got through hot August nights. Um, not a ton of publicity following hot August nights. What was your understanding of how well they did? They did really well, except for one of the things that was incredibly challenging. I mean, it's it's been challenging. We all know this is sort of our air quality from the fire. And so, you know, that's really hard to have an outdoor event whenever you have sort of poor air quality, but people were really excited to get back and they really want their special events. So it was, it was really nice. I thought the event went really well. 
Um, the promoters were really happy. The casinos were really happy. Our visitors are happy. Um, and matter of fact, I mean, we're looking at some record numbers when it comes to tourism and travel here in Reno, which is exciting. So it kind of speaks volumes of how well some of these events probably will do. Again, I think, you know, people are and, and events are putting policies in place that want to take things into precaution. I think that's important to remember that we're still very much seeing, you know, this virus take a hold. Were you surprised because, you know, politicians in general, and I'm not specifically looking at you, but politicians in general over the last few years have kind of downplayed the gaming industry and its influence in Northern Nevada. And, and yet it's still a very dominant industry. And the resilience of this industry has been stunning to me. Absolutely. Well, it speaks volumes that people love gaming and, you know, being a city that we're predominantly gaming, we need to love gaming as well and embrace gaming. I mean, they're a big part of our economy here. They create many jobs. They give a lot back to our community. So, you know, I'm very grateful that we have great gaming partners. All right, let's talk about uh, a couple of issues. So one thing that popped up here, although as we are taping this, um, the official announcement has not come out yet, but it's been all over the media, uh, which is that Kate Marshall uh, is stepping down as lieutenant governor and going to uh, work for the Biden administration. Um, I, I have heard off the record comments from certain uh, Reno City Council people that they might be being considered for this or want to be considered for this. Um, have you any thoughts on, on either colleagues being up for this job or yourself being up for this job? No, you know, I, well, again, you know, a lot of people may or may not know this about me. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. So I typically don't know what the parties are thinking or how they're strategizing or, you know, who's sort of they're tapping for those positions. Um, I love, you know, my city very, very much. I'm focused on our recovery. I'm definitely not focused on reelections. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure the governor will make a great, a great choice. Um, I, but for me personally, I'm really focused on the city of Reno. We, we have a lot of opportunities ahead of us, but we also have a lot of challenges. So I wanna keep my eye on the ball. And as far as my colleagues, you know, any of them would probably be fantastic. I'm very supportive of all of my colleagues. And, um, you know, I, I, I think, um, but I'd like to keep all of my colleagues too. <laughs> I, I, I don't want them to, to go anywhere, of course, me selfishly, but if it's something that the opportunity came up, of course, I'd be very supportive. Um, with all this federal money that's coming to Nevada, um, I was talking to uh, Ed Lawson, the mayor of Sparks, and his biggest issue uh, was sewer capacity and the concern that we're running out of sewer capacity in Northern Nevada, and that could be the thing that impedes the growth that is not only here, but continuing to grow. Your thoughts on that and the price tag of maybe near a billion dollars to do that? Yeah, I think it's it's a real issue. I think, I think Mayor Lawson is correct. I think, again, it's really important because as we know, we're having a housing crisis and we need to continue to grow in, but grow smart, right? And sewer capacity really is a challenge. So I do think infrastructure is really critical. And with that money, um, that's what many mayors are talking about is really making sure we have robust infrastructure like our sewer capacity and things like that. So we have to keep our eye on that, especially, you know, we have a lot of projects coming into the city. I wanna focus on infill development. Infill is really, really important instead of sprawl. And so we need better infrastructure to make sure that we can handle that kind of capacity. So I, I, Mayor Lawson is, is right on. These are the conversations that we're having as infrastructure is really, really critical. Um, are you also looking as he is um, at infill projects uh, that are going vertical rather than uh, horizontal? Yeah, absolutely. I, we still, I think people forget, we still have a lot of dilapidated buildings in the city of Reno. I'm really focused on downtown uh, revitalization. I think it's important that we do go vertical. It makes much more sense. Density uh, in infill development makes much more sense. It's also more affordable, but we still do see these vacant parcels. We see these still these rundown buildings. There's plenty of opportunity in our city to continue to, you know, build robust projects right here where it makes sense. Um, and sort of, you know, really look at how we we plan and also the blight that we still see. There's plenty of 
places uh, right here in the city of Reno that we can be focusing on to build. Um, one of the issues that obviously continues, even though there's just been a new center opened up that's helping with the homeless, um, but as development is occurring in lots of places, in downtown, in midtown, now at uh, what used to be Park Lane Mall, which is the red development, which is a fabulous development, the former Shopper Square that is a fabulous development, but it's pushing the homeless uh, more and more uh, further out into the community. W what is your concern about that as people come to visit the city and uh, to, to perhaps bring their business here and then they go to every corner and see two or three people begging for money. Yeah, it's really, really challenging. And it's not just in the city of Reno, it's in cities all across America. One of the things I am really passionate about and focused on is mental health and addiction. I think it's been you know, America's dirtiest secret for a very, very long time. And so I'm really working hard on a 24 seven crisis center we should not be using our jails as mental health hospitals. Our ERs are not equipped to deal with mental health. Most of that, what you're seeing on the street really is mental health and addiction. And I keep saying, we've got to get to the root of the problem. I think in government, there is sort of this idea that if we put a roof over someone's head, those challenges and issues are going to go away, but we need to come to what is the circumstance that got them there? And so starting early and often, like in our schools, talking about mental health, getting the appropriate services for mental health and addiction, that's really where we've got to start to be proactive instead of reactive. But the campus is a really, really good start. No, it's not perfect, but I will tell you this, it was something that was going to be five years out because of COVID, we fast-tracked that. We had some incredible people, staff members at the city of Reno that really helped launch that. And we did it in record speed and we needed to because quite honestly, you know, we need people to have services so that they can get help for those kinds of challenges and wraparound housing um, and wraparound services. But transitional housing is something we don't have in the city of Reno. And so um, I'm fortunate enough to be on the board of RHA and we've invested millions of dollars of, to put transitional housing in to make sure that we can start to get those kinds of services because we've got to treat the problem. And that's what I'm constantly seeing is that we are so reactive instead of proactive when it comes to dealing with our homeless. But I also, you know, do take a hardline approach. And, and part of that is because I, you know, had a brother that struggled with drug addiction. I saw what worked, I saw what didn't work. And, you know, you can be compassionate, but at the same time, we have to have parameters. It's that's really, really important. You know, the river has been is such an issue for me for three or four years. And I've been saying this and saying this. And finally, we're going to see, you know, some initiatives along the river, which is one of my biggest initiatives. Is it's 24 seven river rangers. And that's because we have had people living along the river, which A, it's our drinking water. We need it to be sustainable, but it's also incredibly dangerous for our vulnerable populations to be living along the river. If we have a fire or a flood, um, we will, you know, we could potentially lose a lot of lives. And so I have taken a hard line approach with that. We have a CARES campus now and people need to get services and it's not appropriate or is it safe to be living on street corners? So do you see the population of homeless people increasing faster than the services that you can provide? Absolutely. I, I, and that's such a big downside of it. Uh, it's really challenging, like I said, for every city. And that's why I really believe if cities put mental health first, we would be in such a better position. And think about the economics of that. It really would change cities if we really, really invested in mental health and addiction. It is getting really, really severe, Sam. And it, like I said, it's not just in the city of Reno. Go visit other cities. You see it everywhere. And it's a real problem. And we have got to start at the top. The federal government needs to start really focusing on this. Uh, states need to start focusing on this. Cities need to be focusing on this. I keep saying mental health first, because think about the economic impacts of you know, what that does to our entire economy and our well-being and, and our quality of life. We, like I said, um, I'm working on a 24 seven crisis center. A lot of our police officers spend a lot of intake time, sometimes two, three, 
four hours to do intake after they've arrested someone for a minor crime that really should go to a crisis center where they can get help and services right then. And it's called the warm handoff. It's about a two minute handoff that our officers do. So that makes a lot of sense. Otherwise, we spend a lot of taxpaying dollars sort of chasing this you know, tail all the time when it comes to mental health and addiction. So I'm working on a 24 seven crisis center. The governor has been nice enough to give us a building um, to be able to implement that model. It's something out of Arizona. It's been very successful and we need to have that same model here because uh, honestly to taxpayers, it costs a lot of money. And it's also, you know, it's detrimental to so many people in their health. So let me ask you this because it seems to me over the years, first of all, that mental health has been an issue ever since I got into the news business, and that was 1980. And so um, I've been hearing these discussions since then. But it seems to me that the taxpayers are willing to pay additional taxes if it goes to a specific cause. And I give you the best example of being the RTCs, both in Las Vegas and in Washoe County, um, where they ask for a tax increase to fix the roads and get better bus service, et cetera and people are willing in Washoe County to pay 30 cents a gallon more for gasoline, um, but they can see the quality of their roads. Is there a price tag? Is there a taxing idea in mind that you could say, if you put this amount of money towards um, th this mental health problem that we have, we could get well on the way to solving this, but this is how much it's gonna cost? Yeah, I think it's really hard to put A, a number on it, but B, people really want to see their tax dollars spent. They want to be able to physically see it, right? I, I think that's important too. Um, and, but I would also say this, cities are not structured in a way to deal with mental health. Matter of fact, most of that money goes to the county side and, and even more so than that, it goes to the state side. And so none of that money comes down to the city of Reno. And I really have said, look, this problem is so much larger that we all have to be doing it as a jurisdiction working together. Um, and so I think, again, the way that the, the funding is and those mechanisms are really, really broken when it, coming, when it comes down to being able to pay for services. I mean, I think there's a few things that can be done at the legislator, like legislation, like access to services. Everyone should have access to mental health services, better crisis services, things like that. I think also, you know, paying those providers more. Um, mental health is one of the lowest paid providers um, that there is. And I think that that has to change. And also we're seeing such a shortage in the mental health industry, trying to get people to work in that industry has been incredibly challenging. Um, and so that's where I think, you know, we can make a, a bit of a difference is trying to really pay attention, you know, what that model looks like. And it's got to be, you know, at the state level, at the federal level. I think it's just, it's too massive of an issue for any one city to say, we, we can tackle this alone. That would never, ever happen. It's got to really start at the top at the federal government, you know, on that side of things and then come down to the local governments. All right, let's take a break. More with the mayor of Reno, Hillary Sheevy, after this timeout. Get in on the Tamarack Casino's $175,000 Hidden Treasures Guaranteed Giveaway now through September 30th. Earn entries in the weekly drawings and win big during the two $35,000 grand prize giveaways. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. I'm Jeff Gehrman, an investigative reporter with the Las Vegas Review Journal. I'm your guide for season two of Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas. You're in with every gangster and hoodlum in the United States. I don't go for that, Mr. Kennedy. Well, I don't go for that kind of action. I was on television accused of fronting for the mob. Subscribe to Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas, Season 2, today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Serving Our Kids Foundation's mission is to serve homeless, at-risk, and food insecure children in grades K through eight throughout Southern Nevada. During the pandemic, Serving Our Kids has seen a 42% increase in the number of children served. 
providing more than 4,500 meals to kids in over 100 schools weekly. Serving Our Kids is powered by community support and volunteers. To learn how you can help, visit servingourkids.org. Get in on the Tamarack Casino's $175,000 Hidden Treasures Guaranteed Giveaway now through September 30th. Earn entries in the weekly drawings and win big during the two $35,000 grand prize giveaways. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Hillary Sheevy. She is the mayor of Reno. One of the issues that is occurring, um, as a lot of people know, uh, on the other side of what I do, I have an advertising agency, and a lot of my clients are struggling because at no matter what cost, they cannot get employees. How big of an issue is this as you see it as mayor? Yeah, I think every business that I know is struggling with it. My businesses are struggling with it. It's been incredibly challenging. Matter of fact, the other day I was at a restaurant and they had a sign up that said, we will only be open Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And so um, and I keep hearing that, you know, it's it is a massive challenge. But I think as sort of some of the stimulus money runs out, people will want to come back to work. Um, I know a lot of businesses that are giving much more incentives and it's really hard because I think people need to realize that these businesses are trying to recover as well because people are saying, oh, they need to pay more, you know, hourly and every business is, is very, very different what they can afford. But at the same time, small businesses have been so hard hit and they're trying to recover as well. So I think as some of the stimulus money starts to you know go away that we will see more people get back in the workforce i mean i think we've been very fortunate in nevada you know um we're very diversified which is really great but it certainly has been challenging to your point sam like i said i see it in my business we're seeing it at the city of reno right now we have so many positions open so here's my plug if anyone wants to work for the city of reno uh go to our website reno.gov and we've got some fantastic positions open right now and great pay so um and a lot of opportunity at the city of reno so there's there's my plug for people to come to work for the for the city of reno okay i will send you a a small invoice for that commercial no i'm kidding you we'll take another break we'll be right back Seven at Seven is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and YouTube. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. At Design Outdoor, we specialize in all hardscapes, pavers, and walls you'll need for everything. From wonderful small yards to full-blown outdoor living. And we only refer the best contractors to make your vision a reality. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I'm men's rights attorney, Marilyn York. And because I represent men in all family law matters, women often call me gender traitor, woman hater, and even disgusting. So why represent men and target myself with these offensive monikers? It's simple. Children with fathers in their lives are six times less likely to drop out of school, 15 times less likely to go to prison, and five times less likely to commit suicide. So ladies, you can hate me, but please love your children more than you hate their fathers. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and Twitter. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Hillary Sheevy. She is the mayor of Reno. Um, you said earlier in the program uh, that you are apolitical. Uh, you do not support either party, but you have been, um, certainly through this COVID crisis, uh, close to uh, Governor Sisolak. Um, are you going to support him in his efforts for re-election? Well, I, I will tell you this. One of the things I think is really important to success is working with all of your partners. I know during COVID, you know, things, I think people have different ideas and sort of you know, how, how they feel about each other. But at the end of the day, it all it's all going to come down to working together and supporting each other. And, you know, I certainly want to see our state thrive. I want to see our governor thrive. We're all in this together. 
And so, you know, as we move forward, I'm going to, you know, stay focused on our recovery, but as well as my city's recovery, but Nevada's recovery. And I think his job has been so challenging, whether, um, you know, you're going left or right, you can't, you, you can't seem to win. Um, you know, I know how that is. Half the people sort of like what you do. Half the people hate what you do. It's very, it's very, very challenging. And I don't care who you are. There is not an elected official out there that um, has an easy time doing, uh, making those tough decisions. And especially when it comes to our economy. So, you know, I really support everyone that really wants to see Nevada thrive and my city thrive. All right, so so back to the actual original question here. So will you will you will you be supporting Governor Sisolak in his reelection effort? Yeah, I I think like I said, I think he's done a good job. I think he's it's been very very difficult. Um, you know, I I respect a lot of the decisions that he's made. It hasn't been easy, and so you know, I certainly I know how that feels. It's it's a very difficult position to be in, um, and so you know, I like I said, I think. He's he's done a good job. I think he's had a lot of difficult, you know, challenges that have been handed to him. I mean, there isn't an, an elected official that would want that sort of responsibility. Um, you know, I know how it feels on a, obviously a smaller scale, but um, I think in his heart of hearts, he really loves Nevada, cares about Nevada, cares about people. Um, but I think people get really wrapped up in sort of the the party politics, and that's really it's unfortunate and it's sad. And that's where we have to leave it. Hilary Sheeby, thank you always for taking the time to do this. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. And please stay healthy. You too, Sam. Thanks so much. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Brian Culp of Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts. And now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culp of Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they will. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Com. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. You can do that now these days. We'll see you on the next broadcast.